VT equals R times omega. V sub T, Sarah Jane, stands for? Velocity. Equals the radius times omega. Omega is? The angular velocity. In order to use this equation, you must use? What must you, dimensions must you use for the angular velocity? Radians per, radians per second. Okay. This is the equation that's on your equation sheet. There are two equations, one that goes above this one and one that goes below this one. Please give me one or the other, Emily. The tangential acceleration is equal to R times alpha. R times alpha. Alpha is what, Michael? Um, angular. angular acceleration. Why is it that this equation goes below tangential velocity equals R times omega? Look. Well, because it's the derivative. Notice, if you take the derivative of the tangential velocity equals R times omega with respect to time, you get tangential acceleration equals R times alpha. What equation goes above this? Arc length equals R theta, where arc length is the largest S. Or the the S equals R theta. Again, why De Silva does this go above this one? It's the integral of velocity. It's the integral of this whole equation with respect to time. Notice, just like tangential velocity equals R times omega, you must use radians in this equation to solve for it. Uh, let's see, we've got all of those. Centripetal, class, the word centripetal means. Center seeking acceleration. We two to have two different equations for the centripetal acceleration, Mr. P. That's third, sorry. Vt squared over R. Vt squared over R, tangential velocity squared over R, and that's equal to? R times omega squared. R times omega squared. So you just use one or the other depending on which one is most appropriate. We have the centripetal force. The net force in the in direction equals mass times centripetal acceleration. Remember, whenever you're doing this, you are drawing a free body diagram in class. You are summing the forces in what direction? The in direction. What are the three things you need to remember about the centripetal force? Um, huh. It's not a new force. Number one, it's not a new force. Um, because it's not a new force, it is a result of the other forces. Because it's, it's not a new like force. Net force it is the net force in the in direction. Because it's not a new force, Sierra. It's not in the free body diagram. It's never in the free body diagram. And the last, Mr. And the last one, Emily. That in is positive and out is negative. In is positive, therefore out is negative. All right. Oh. U fishy M. Please give me the full title of U fishy M. Jenkins. Uniformly angular. Angularly <laughs> accelerated. <laughs> U fishy M is much easier to say than uniformly angularly accelerate uniformly angularly accelerated motion. Yes. What are the th five U fishy M variables, Miller? Uh, theta, uh, delta T, uh, omega, final, omega initial, and fishy. U fishy M works just like U A M. They even give you the equations, which is like cheating. We have the equation for <laughs> torque. Uh, what is the symbol for torque, Catherine? Uh, tau. Tau. What is the equation for torque? We have two different equations. Hillary, give me one. Uh, okay. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> Rf sine theta. Rf sine theta is one. I agree with that. We also have another equation for torque. What is the other equation for torque? Dorstetter. Oh, uh, I, 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 You're correct. It's not the net torque, which is what you were thinking about. We'll get there in a minute. Oh, you want me to? Yes, please. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, it's not the dot product. Cross product of R and F. Cross product. Please remember, you need to be able to do the cross product with I, J, and K unit vectors. You draw your matrix. You have I, J, and K. You have R in the x direction, R in the y direction, R in the z direction, F in the 
x, f in the y, f in the z. You have to remember how to do that. We also have the equation for net torque. What is net torque equal to, Bill? Just like net force equals mass times acceleration. Note the similarity there. Therefore, I, we have a couple names for I, Vlad, is called? The rotational mass. Rotational mass is generally what we call it so that we can understand what it, what it represents. If you look in the equation, it takes the position for mass as far as a rotational equation is. What is the correct name of I, Sierra? moment of inertia, but we call it rotational mass sometimes to understand what it actually means. Uh, we have two different equations for the moment of inertia. The equation for moment of inertia, please. John. Um, Ms. Pollen. Yeah. There's another equation for uh, that pal, or that torque. Ah, yes, we haven't defined uh, angular momentum yet, so yes, there will be. Let's define angular momentum first. John? Um, I don't know. Okay, sure. uh, <laughs> MR squared sum of... No Sorry, squared. say again? The uh, net MR squared. MR squared. So, this is the moment of inertia for what specifically, Sierra? This is for point particles. M is the mass. R is what? What is R in this equation? You check. Not quite. That's OK. That's clearly why I'm asking the question. Uh, Hansa? Radius? Uh, not technically. I'm not going to call it the radius because I want to make sure people understand specifically what it what it is here. Miller. This is the point that you specified. As what? The origin. Uh, not, we don't call it the origin. Jake. Axis of rotation. Axis of rotation, which could be confused with the radius, and a lot of times it's going to be very uh, the same thing. But I just want to make sure you understand that R is the distance to the axis of rotation, which of course means, please remember, Whenever you sum the, sum the forces, you have to identify your direction, and you need to identify your object slash objects that you are summing the forces on. The same is true for the torque. You need to identify your object slash objects and your axis of rotation. Please remember to identify your axis of rotation. We also have an equation for the moment of inertia for an object, a rigid object with shape. What is that equation, Nitish? The integral of r squared with respect to mass. Please notice that these two equations are not the same thing. They are two different equations and they often get confused with one another when you are memorizing your equations for the final exam. We have rotational and translational equilibrium. Please give me an equation that defines something in translational equilibrium. <coughs> Net force equals zero. This is translational equilibrium. What does it mean for an object to be in a translational equilibrium? Sarah Jane. Uh, it uh, doesn't have an acceleration. It is not accelerating. It could be moving at a constant velocity or at rest. We have the equation for uh, rotational equilibrium. Hillary? Um, net tau equals zero. So again? Net tau. Net tau, net torque is equal to zero. This means what is true physically about the object. Tim? It is equal to the slipping. Say it? Rolling, not slipping. No, this does not, not mean it's rolling without slipping. We'll get to rolling without slipping in a little bit. Vlad, what does it mean physically for the object? Not spinning. No. It's not accelerating. 
not angularly accelerating. It is not angularly accelerating. Fishy thing is equal to zero. It's either at rest or moving at a constant angular velocity. Note, this is equal to mass times acceleration. This is equal to I times alpha. It simply means that alpha is equal to zero or A is equal to zero. Okay. 